Hey everybody, I'm Megan Abbott. I'm the founder of Fruition Coaching, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make better decisions. The ability to confidently and efficiently make decisions is such a crucial one in life for our success and fulfillment. Because when we aren't able to do so, what happens is we get stuck. And that's the number one thing that we hear from people coming to coaching is, help me, I'm stuck. And so today I'm gonna to teach you a tool called a decision-making model, which will allow you to more confidently make decisions in your life. Now you can apply this model to any decision that you need to make from what you should eat for dinner to where you should move if you're considering a move to who you should marry to the ultimate decision. What should I do with my life? And I know this is one that a lot of people struggle with, myself personally, way back when, struggled with this as well. And uh, the, the way most of us approach any decision, but especially this decision, is that we start by thinking about all of our options, right? That's the way we approach a decision, is we start by evaluating our options. So we're thinking, all right, I could be a flight attendant. Uh, I could be go back to school and be a lawyer. I could be an engineer, especially in software. I hear that's where the future is going. Whatever. We start by thinking about the ideas, okay? This is an erroneous approach because what we do when we're thinking about our ideas and options, then maybe we do a pro-cons list, and inevitably you got some cons on these lists, and we're motivated as human beings to avoid pain and gain pleasure, and because we're seeing this con list full of pain, we're saying, ah, uh, I don't know, maybe there's something else I'm not even considering yet. We get that FOMO, right? and we're afraid to make the wrong decision. We're so afraid to make the wrong decision. And as a result, we are stuck and wasting and missing our life. So without further ado, here is the decision-making model. Step one, start by clarifying your outcome. What is on the other side of all of these options that you've been thinking about? What is it that you want? And I know that question is an anxiety inducing one for a lot of people because you feel like you don't know what you want because that requires you to have some understanding of who you are. You don't know that either. <laughs> now we have an identity crisis, but hold your horses. We got the solutions to help you. So with this step one, clarifying your outcome, think about it like this. If you were going to uh, evaluate your career on a scale from one to 10, a fulfillment scale, okay? 10 being really fulfilled, I love my job. What would be the qualities, the characteristics that would make a career a 10 for you? So start to pull it apart with what do you want in a career? What would make it a 10? So instead, your brain keeps wanting to go back to, yeah, but maybe, is it a flight attendant? Forget the form that it could come in right now. Right now, you are just thinking about the individual qualities that are important to you in a career, okay? That's step one. Step two is now that you've got this list, you've clarified your outcome of what you want in a career, now you brainstorm your possible options and ideas that could be a fit for that outcome that you've just clarified. Okay, so now you can capture the things that have been bouncing around your head and the power of, of this decision-making model and strategy is that as you're getting clear on these qualities, it starts to paint a picture, kind of like a connect the dots, where it starts as just a mess of dots. You start to connect them and you see, oh, this kind of looks like a rhino <laughs> or whatever, right? It starts to describe a career or a few careers, right? That could be a fit. And this is immensely helpful since right now we have that high quality problem that we could pretty much do anything professionally, right? That's a high quality problem, but that's a problem nonetheless. So with this model, now we start to eliminate those things that are clearly not a fit for my outcome of what I'm looking for. 
So we're brainstorming now the possible career paths that could be a fit for this outcome. Maybe you talk to some of your friends, open it up, get their ideas, sharing with them what it is that you're looking for. And now in this second step, brainstorming your possible options, what we're gonna do, we like to use this really advanced software, piece of software called Excel. You may have heard of it. If you have and you have access to it, use it, because here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. In the first column, you're going to list in individual cells the qualities that you're looking for in a career, okay? Each one gets their own cell, because it's important. Now, across the top row, you're going to list your career ideas in individual uh, columns, all right? Each one gets their own. Now, step three in the decision-making model is, now you're going to evaluate, measure your options and ideas against your outcome here. Do you see why this is such a powerful strategy to make decisions? Because without doing it this way, how could you possibly know what the best decision is if you have nothing to evaluate it against, such to quantify best? See, I know, it's pretty smart. So you're gonna take now each option, each career idea path that you have, and you're going to get some more information, right? Most likely. Maybe you need to do some informational interviews or go shadow somebody who is you know, in this career right now. Maybe you just get on Google and learn some more such that you feel confident that you can evaluate how well this career idea meets each quality in your outcome. And you're gonna evaluate it on a scale from one to 10, okay? It's a subjective rating, but it doesn't matter because you're the damn judge of your fulfillment, so it only matters what you think anyway. So now you're going to this brilliant feature in Excel, I just love it. It's called AutoSum. So now once you finish rating each career idea based on your outcome, you're gonna hit AutoSum and it's gonna automatically tally your scores. You don't even need a calculator. It's mind blowing. And now you're gonna see what the highest rating career options are based on what it is that you're looking for. But wait, there's more. <laughs> So now, step four in the decision-making model is that we need to mitigate any low-scoring qualities, okay? Because a huge problem that I see happening right now is that people are waiting for perfection. They're waiting for the clouds to part and God to smile down at them that this is it, this is your thing. And I'm yet to see it happen like that a decade in to helping people. Uh, I'm yet to see it happen like that. Inevitably, there are gonna be some hangups, some concerns. When I became a life coach at 23 and was faced with quitting my highly sought after job in PR, I had some concerns about that path, right? Most notably job security, uh, since who hires life coaches and so that needed to be worked on, to be mitigated, because we don't wanna throw the baby out with the bathwater. There are going to be hangups and low scoring qualities, I guarantee it. It doesn't mean that it's wrong or not a right fit for you. It means we need to now get creative and strategic and mitigate, isolate the problematic variables, now we can see, and now we need to get creative and strategic to mitigate it. Hmm, if it's job security that's scoring low, maybe I could uh, create some savings before I quit that would make me feel safe, secure. Maybe I could get a, a second job on the side while I'm building my coaching practice. Maybe I could get a partner, right? I mean, it's infinite the ways in which you could mitigate maybe something that is naturally scoring a little bit lower. But this is a crucial step in the process because I guarantee you it's not gonna be perfect. And if you wait for perfect, you're gonna miss your whole damn life. So get to mitigating. Now, so you're essentially seeing how can you bump some of these scores up? And sometimes it's just a shift in how you look at it. Sometimes it means negotiating that you can work from home, right? Or work from wherever, if that's important to you. You really have the power to design your career exactly to your liking. 
if you understand what that is, the power comes with the clarity of understanding what you want. Without that understanding, we're powerless, we're lost, we're anxiety uh, riddled. Is that the word? Uh, it just doesn't work. So now then we have enough information to confidently make the decision on the right career path for us. And you will know it because it will not only make sense, now we logically understand why this is the best path, the right path for me, but you will also feel that it's right. You'll feel the resonance. So it's both right and left brain. You feel it with your gut, you understand it, right? With your brain and why this is the right fit for you. Um, doesn't that sound nice? <laughs> to feel confident that this is the path for me? Great, you're welcome. Now, if you feel like, going back to that first step, but I'm not really sure what it is that I want or what should be included in my outcome of a fulfilling career. And maybe there are some things that I'm not considering that need to be a part of that career. And yes, very often that's the case, including you know things like the pace of your work and your team and your environment. For some people, fire drills and constant changes and needing to quickly make conclusions or decisions is not a fit for their personality type, right? While others really need that stimulation, that excitement, that challenge. And so considering and understanding some things like that, they're going to be unique to you and need to be congruent with what it is that you're doing to be fulfilled. Um, and so, to help with this and to make sure that we are thoroughly, uh, accurately, adequately uh, clarifying our outcome of those specific qualities that need to be a fit for me uniquely and what it is that I'm doing, we developed a process. Call it a fulfillment framework. I've developed it over this last decade plus of helping people figure out what they should be doing with their life that's going to be a right fit for them um, and within it we're looking to clarify it's a multifaceted process um, but essentially what we're looking to clarify are a few things number one are your passions and interests the things that you love the things that you're constantly drawn towards thinking about make you feel more alive or really understanding what those things are because I think that that's for a reason. That's part of why you're here. Uh, and it's an important component of what it is that you should be doing. So that's one thing that we are clarifying. Secondly, are your natural talents and strengths. It's great to understand uh, things that you have learned, skills, knowledge, ability, but it's more important for your fulfillment that what you're doing is a fit for what you are naturally gifted at great at. And within our process, we want to distill that down to understand your unique genius. I believe everybody has a genius, something unique about you that you're better at than most people that you're here to give. Your work, for it to feel fulfilling, needs to be smack dab in the center of what you are naturally best at. So we'll help you understand what that is. Thirdly, is we want to clarify your values. Your values are what's most important to you in life. Uh, for example, one of my top values in life is freedom. Prior to entering coaching, becoming a coach, I worked for a big company, nine to five, except it was much longer hours than that, chained to a desk at a cubicle under fluorescent lighting during all hours of daylight. I felt totally trapped and enslaved because freedom is so crucial for me. And once I understood what my values were, it made so much sense to me why I was so depressed in this job because it just wasn't a fit for who I am. So we want to understand what your values are, what's most important to you in life to make sure that your work is in alignment with those values. Because we're a big believer that your work is where you're spending the majority of your life. And it should not be a means to an end so you can enjoy two days off of your week. 
I mean, think about the percentage of what that adds up in the totality of your life. That's too big of a price to pay, in my opinion. We want you to be enjoying your work. And in order for you to enjoy and feel a sense of fulfillment, it needs to be in alignment with your values, which means we need to understand what your values are. So that's a third piece of this fulfillment framework. I think I'm salivating or spitting here, foaming at the mouth. Don't be distracted, focus fourth piece here in this fulfillment framework is to understand your unique purpose. Now listen, even if you aren't Mother Teresa and it seems like you, you know, altruism is not incredibly important to you at this point in your life, I guarantee you for you to feel fulfilled, you need to feel some sense of meaning in what it is that you're doing. You need to feel a sense of contribution and in a way that checks these other boxes right, of what you have to uniquely give, to contribute in some way that is important to you. It doesn't mean you need to go join the Red Cross. It means you need to feel that the work you're doing matters in some way that's important to you. And we'll help you understand what your unique purpose is here. Not just for your career fulfillment, but let's talk about your life fulfillment and how important it is to understand why I am uniquely here, why I'm made the way I am, why I've been through some of the shit I've been through, right? I think it's all for a reason and not a coincidence, and it thrills me to no end to, be, to help you be able to connect the dots and put the pieces together to see how it fits and why you're here. So, I get very excited about this, as you can see. So this multifaceted process that I call fulfillment framework is designed to help you to go below the hood to better understand who you are so that then when you go to step one in that decision-making model, you have a thorough picture of what needs to be included and a fit with your next career, with your career path that's a right fit for you. Now, that's the process that we walk, walk our clients through and that we've been doing for over a decade. Um, and we've really got it down to a science at this point uh, that is effective and efficient. And we are very excited uh, to be able to now package it so that it is available to more people. Um, and because one-on-one -on -one coaching is really powerful, it's very effective, but it is not always financially feasible for everyone. And that pains us because our mission in life, Fruition Coaching's mission, is to help people wake up in the morning excited. Because I think that's the greatest litmus test as to how we're doing in life is how do you wake up feeling? <laughs> do you moan and groan and dread getting out of bed? Or do you feel excited, a sense of anticipation for your day ahead? That's our mission is to help people wake up excited. And by packaging this process that we use to help people figure out what you should be doing with your life, we're going to be able to help more people uh, wake up excited than we ever could do one on one. So if this sounds of interest to you and you want to learn some more about the program, it's an online coaching program, then click a button and it'll take you to a page with some more information. Um, if you have any questions for me about decision making or anything else in life where I may be able to serve and help you, please let me know because I'm genuinely here to serve and to wake people up and show them how to stop wasting your life, show you what it can and should be. So let me know if I can help you and I'll see you soon.